The basic simple harmonic oscillator is a spring mass system with no friction. The equilibrium position by definition means the net force on the box is zero. This means at the equilibrium position, the spring is relaxed and the x is zero. The box oscillates between the two endpoints, and the speed at the endpoint is zero because it is a turning point. The distance between the equilibrium and the endpoint is what we call the amplitude. Because there is no friction, the net force on the mass during oscillation is the spring's force, and net force equals to ma. So if we need to relate x, the distance to the equilibrium position, and the acceleration, we can use this force equation. Because there is no friction to take energy away, so the mechanical energy K plus U would be a constant the entire time when the box oscillates. And at the equilibrium position, because the spring is relaxed, there is no energy stored in the spring. And that means we have the maximum kinetic energy. That means at that point, the speed is a maximum. So the maximum speed happens at the equilibrium. And uh, at the end point, because the speed is zero, there is no kinetic energy. All of the energy is in the potential energy. So we have maximum potential energy at the end point. And the maximum potential energy is the one half K times the amplitude squared. If the box is anywhere in between the endpoint and the equilibrium, then we have both kinds of energy. We will have both 1 half mv squared and the 1 half kx squared. So if we want to relate the speed to the x, this is what we would use. And the period of a oscillation is defined as the time per event. The frequency of the oscillation is the number of events per unit time. So period is 1 over frequency, and the frequency is 1 over period. For this simple harmonic oscillator, we have an equation for the period that is 2 pi square root of m over k. During the oscillation, the position as a function of time is a sine-cosine kind of shape. If we start timing at the equilibrium position, then it is a sine function. So if we write the position as a function of time, then it will be a sine function. And what goes here is, uh, let's see, the sine oscillates between 1 and negative 1, but the position of the oscillator oscillates between the negative amplitude and the positive amplitude. So what goes here is uh, the amplitude. And then what goes here is something times t. The sine function goes through one cycle in an angle of 2 pi. That means if I plug in the time t equals to the period. So this thing times the time that is one period, the angle in here should equal to 2 pi. So what goes in the box must be 2 pi divided by the period. If the mass is at the end point at t equals to 0, then this will be a cosine function. But this part will be exactly the same. It's just instead of a sine, you would have cosine. When the mass oscillates, its velocity as a function of time and the acceleration as a function of time would both be sine-cosine kind of shape also. If the position as a function of time is a sine graph, then we can figure out what the velocity graph is like, because we can find the velocity from the slope of the position versus time graph. At the beginning, the slope here is positive, so we start with a positive velocity, and then here the slope is zero, so the velocity is zero over here, so it must be a cosine graph. To find the acceleration, we can just find the slope of the velocity graph. At the beginning, the slope is zero, and then the slope becomes negative. So the acceleration starts at zero and then becomes negative, so it's going to be like this. It's going to be a negative sine graph, like this. 
This is a horizontal oscillator. But if we have vertical oscillators with the same mass and the same spring constant, and if we set it into oscillation at the same amplitude, all three boxes, they will go through exactly the same motion, which means uh, even though we did all this using the horizontal oscillator, everything over here would apply to the vertical oscillator as well. The only difference is that for this oscillator, at the equilibrium position, the net force is zero, the spring is stretched, so the Kx balances with the mg. Same thing here. At the equilibrium position, this spring is compressed, while this spring is relaxed. And if the oscillator involves a combination of springs, then we can use these equations to find the equivalent spring constant, and then just use the equivalent spring constants, then all these things will also work for these oscillators. From this equation, we can see that the period of a spring mass oscillator only depends on the mass and the spring's force constant. Changing the amplitude of the oscillation will not change the period. Another simple harmonic oscillator is a simple pendulum with a small amplitude oscillation. The period can be found using this equation. It only depends on the length of the pendulum and the gravitational acceleration at that location. Changing the mass would not affect the period. Changing the amplitude would not affect the period either, as long as the amplitude is kept small. If the amplitude is too big, say more than 10 degrees, it would still oscillate, it's just that the oscillation would not be simple harmonic.